Hello everybody, welcome to Blue Marble Science. And let's say a welcome back to Anthony Riley. The Sleeping Warrior had his channel taken down two or three weeks ago, but he's back in business and almost up to 200 subscribers again, so well done, Anthony. But the question is, what's wrong with your Cavendish experiment? An even better question is, who even knew you had one? Warning, severe facial and monitor damage alert is in effect. Get out the oven mitts, push those monitors back out of punching range, and let's light this dumpster fire and have some fun. You ready, Gladys? Well, let's get this show on the road. A couple of days ago, I put a brief update in the community section of my channel where I talked about the beryllium copper wire that I have installed in Cavendish right now that I've been evaluating to see if we could use it. And it turns out that even after a week or a week and a half, that wire is still drifting enough that we will not be able to get accurate measurements of the total deflection, so we can't do any calculations of G using it. And I think I'll just go back to what I know is stable and what I've seen work in the past, and that's that 0.007 or 0.008 inch diameter steel guitar string. But that evoked an immediate response from the sleeping warrior, and that's what you see on the screen. Anthony says, so you can't get it to rest stationary either. We spent months trying to stop it doing this. We never got it to stop randomly moving. And then he says, we also found that lead weights have no effect on the randomness. Defo no apparent attraction. Well, that confused me because I'm not aware of any ongoing Cavendish type experiment being done by anybody in Flat Earth. But then I remember an episode from Randy Flat Earth's channel in August of last year. It was about a device that Dr. John D. had come up with to prove one way or the other that mass attracts mass. Let me play a little bit of that for you. Just want to make it clear that this, what we're going to do is observational only. All we're going to do is just look and see what we see. So we are bringing in no past, no bias, nothing. Just We're just going to watch like human beings. Like That's it. So I'd like to you to I'd like to introduce you to um to like the setup and Clive. Do you want to talk talk them through it because this was made on it by Clive. Yeah. Okay. Hiya. Um. Basically, it's just like um a balance bar um sus suspended by a very fine copper wire. Um. At the top of the top of the tube, the pipe. It's. Is you want this on the picture of the, of the top mount? Yeah. This is the setup. Um. So the wire is pivoting at the top on um. A, a high tensile screw sitting on glass so there's no wind up of the cable so you've eliminated torque from the torsion balance oh dear when the balance bar is moved from side to side so there's no to reduce the friction right down to the bare minimum so there's no bias, there's no twist on the cable if the bar, if the balance bar moves from side to side. Um, and then we're going to try with various different weights and materials to see what we get. And before this goes any further, I want to applaud these guys for actually coming up with an idea and building something and trying to test it. So many people involved in this flat earth gravity doesn't exist hallucination will never get their hands dirty. They won't try anything. All they do is sit and talk. At least these guys tried something. But now let's see if we can help them understand what went wrong. A torsion balance works because the torsion wire resists being twisted. When we twist it, it wants to untwist itself. If the disturbance is transient in nature, the beam will move and twist the wire. But if the force isn't constant, the balance will simply oscillate around the original resting point and eventually come to a rest at the original position. On the other hand, if we apply a uniform constant force to it, like the force caused by the gravitational attraction of the large masses to the small masses, the balance will again oscillate, but this time it will oscillate around a different resting point. And that's how we can be sure that we're seeing 
the force of gravitational attraction and not just some transient upset. I'll show some video shortly showing how a transient disturbance affects a true torsion balance. These guys are 90% of the way there. They just need to fix the top of that torsion wire and let the wire twist. That's all that's needed. Absolutely free, even with the weights on. Okay, so let me just say that to actually just get that <laughs> to balance, I bet that took an awful long time to get that to balance. And that way we will get the, the, the people that are involved with this will get to come to my channel, look at the video, see the comments, and they'll know that this is the place to come and get that information. If you've got a problem with it, speak out about it now. Don't do it afterwards, after two weeks, if it doesn't do any movement or anything like that, and then come back and say you should have tried this. The guys are giving you two weeks here, two weeks notice, to tell them why this is not going to work and what they need to do to improve it. So you've got your work cut out, guys, because I think you've done a, a pretty good job here. I did what Randy suggested, and I put this comment in the comment section of his video. And by the way, you'll find a link to that in the description. I also sent an email to Randy. This is a copy of the email. I was hoping this would promote a dialogue and we could have some discussion about what they were doing, but I never heard a word from anybody. And then the thing just vanished into oblivion. Never gave it any more thought until Sleeping Warriors started pitching a fit about instability, not understanding that there's a difference between drift and oscillation, and obviously not understanding how a torsion balance actually works. Now, let me show you some video of the previous balance, the one that had the 330 gram lead balls on it and the .007 steel wire installed. And you judge for yourself how stable this thing is. Since this is about a two and a half hour video, it was shot on February the 22nd, and it was not shot as a uh, time lapse, I'm just going to use the slider here on the player uh, to progress through this thing. Watch the laser spot up here. And you'll note this thing starts at about 11.30, and it goes through to almost 2 o'clock. So I'm just going to slowly go along. Now you're going to see a couple of blips in here. If you're watching, you'll see the garage door open right there. See the dog walking around. And you see a reaction to the door opening and people being out there in the vicinity. But now watch. From 11.45 thereabouts, this is where we get the reaction to the door having been opened. So from 12 o'clock, let's look now to the point where the door opens again. Watch that laser spot. Watch the clock. So there's an hour. Coming up on the door opening again, right in a second, I think. There we go. Door opens again. So for one hour and 20 minutes, for one hour and 20 minutes, that laser spot essentially didn't move. Don't tell me you can't get stability out of one of these things. You most certainly can. Um, after the door opens again, you see a little downscale deflection of the laser, but then it comes back. This one actually oscillates a little bit. The door was open for a longer time period, but there you go out to almost two minutes. So that should dispel any concerns anyone has as to whether or not this Cavendish is capable of producing consistent and repeatable results. So do this, Anthony. Head back to the shed and fix this mess. Make a torsion balance out of this. And you'll be able to demonstrate gravity just like I'm doing. Hey, thanks for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed it. And remember, Anthony, when I say how stupid can you be, that isn't a challenge. That's a question. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons. Click the little bell if you want notifications. Shout out to the patrons and PayPals. Look for your name. It's coming up in a second. Hey, Gladys. <coughs> We're out of here.